Hi all, welcome to Rax Infotech. Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to share a couple of Oracle DBA entry questions and uh, I try to explain one or two questions answers also. Yep, uh, this is our Rax Infotech YouTube channel guys. So if you are watching first time, uh, you can like go through all the videos like whatever the entry questions, DBA trainings, Rack DBA trainings. If you like it, you can, I mean, uh, subscribe, share and uh, follow our channel for latest updates. Okay, let's get started guys. Today's one. Uh, so these interview questions, right? Uh, this is for 10 plus years experience, uh, real time questions, which uh, these questions has been asked by one of the company, MNC company, Oracle Corporation. And uh, asked by like one of my friend has been attended this interview and I want to share these questions to you. These might helpful, but these questions exactly they are not going to ask again, right? But it will be helpful. And also you can like comment it below. Is it suitable for 10 plus years or it is suitable for how many years experience? Just comment it for your uh, uh, experience and all. Okay, let's get started guys. I have uh, segregated in a part like uh, DR part, SQL, uh, basics, all those things like architecture wise and uh, performance and monitoring wise, exact data questions as well and rack and patching related questions. I have, these are all real time guys, live questions which has been faced by one of my friend. Okay, now this is on 2025 latest interview questions which are asked first one is the data guard part what is the maximum availability like they want to understand uh, how the candidate like the profile uh, having how much experience they have in data guard so first they are trying to ask how I mean what is the like uh, new features which are there in uh, uh, what i can say data guard 19c uh, do you have I mean do you have any experience such kind of uh, scenarios they mean he said that uh, he has faced that way so their intention was whether the candidate is having latest features accessible like hands-on experience or not just want to check okay just go it go through it most of the interviews you may face this question like maximum availability protection modes right availability performance and uh maximum protection if you are going to give a wrong answer right they they are right ready to laugh Okay, that is okay. Uh, that is individual uh, interior uh, point of view. The thing is, we should understand what is the use case and uh, before going to attend any kind of interview, we should be ready to answer. Okay, even though it is a simple thing, we have to answer. That is our responsibility. Their responsibility is they need to ask the questions. Okay, yeah. Another question is new features, as I said, right? For not only this data guard, each and everything when uh, Oracle has been released, the uh, new uh, versions, right? Uh, as a DBA, we should learn those things and uh, good to have that uh, new future ideas and knowledge with us, right? That's where uh, this is another question which they have asked. And mention any new features introduced in data. I mean, especially they are going to ask any new features, like especially for data guard, uh, they want to know how uh, knowledgeable these candidates on data guard part. Another question is, uh, what is the process of fast failover? Like, they have given some scenario based kind of one. They have primary and standby uh, related thing. And the standby side, the redo is not applying. And there is a lag and it is not applying. The transferring of the redo is good, but the applying phase was taking time. So how we are going to troubleshoot in that way. And uh, yeah, that's all about it, uh, the data guard uh, part. And uh, there could be another questions also in our previous uh, videos. I have shared a couple of data guard related. These questions has been asked and coming to SQL and database internals, like it's a performance and architecture level, right? Uh, these are other questions which are asked from the Oracle Corporation side interview. But the guys like uh, location wise is different. The candidate wise is different. This is I'm giving you like these, que these, these questions might be helpful when you are uh, preparing for interviews, right? That's where. And what is the shared cursor uh, kind of one? What is the, I mean, mostly in memory level, right? You may get the cursor, shared cursor or cursor. What is the use of these things? This is one thing. Not only this Oracle Corporation, you may face some other questions like some other companies. They want to understand uh, what is mean by this and how it is going to work internally. And also a uh, few people uh, may interest on how the select query will work out right here. Uh, they are asked like update query, what are the background processes which are going to involved uh, as part of this update statement. So you can go through that steps, uh, select query how it is going to execute, step one to uh, the output is received uh, to the client side, right, client machine side. So this is another question and uh, SMAN related questions, they want to understand what is the use of SMAN 
and as part of instance crash recovery which uh, process rolling forward or rolling backward right which process is going to invoke in the first roll forward or roll backward which is important as part of instance crash recovery so here and there they are going to ask like one or two questions right so just get an idea how the s1 will work and how the instance recovery roll forward roll backward what is mean by those things exactly what happened at that uh, at the time of roll forward and backward we can say simply uh, committed transactions will be roll forward uncommitted roll backward right but we need to have more knowledge they want to test that as well right this is generic one question to answer is different and uh, real time we need to put some extra efforts to understand the concept okay if you have anything guys if you want to know more about it uh, if you have while you are going through the question and you are preparing the answer right if you have anything just comment it i will try to respond it back with the, my uh, experience on this part and what is the differences between like do we have any experience on sql profiling what is mean by the baseline of sql sql plans and all so they want to know whether like do we have any performance tuning wise how much uh, in depth knowledge you have how much hands on experience you have that's where they asked uh, this question and what is the new features in oracle again the data guard wise even a new version right now we have 26 ai also in place so we'll make one more video on that part that is the secondary thing but we need to understand what are the new features which are useful to dba part we don't need to go with all the new features for uh, technical functional developers everybody can have that their scope scope of work to learn the new features we should not go all the 256 or 300 plus new features which has been introduced in 19c but we should make sure as part of dba what are the new features which are useful that we need to learn and how do you clone a database in multi-tenant architectures they mean simply they, they they used to ask you how you are going to do the clone like multi-tenant architecture i have made a couple of uh, these things videos on that part Pluggable clone, unplug and unplug are network level clones we need to do and uh, we can do by using arm and also we can do create and recreate. So make sure you can uh, refresh your skill on cloning part as well, even though in multi tenant, how you are going to do that uh, cloning, how fast you are going to do, whether do, do you have any hands on experience or not, just want to check on this part, they ask this question as well. And coming to the performance tuning uh, and monitoring part. Uh, what is the like how you are going to read this AWS report especially when uh, recent interviews right they are expecting uh, the comparison between exa data environments and non exa data like traditional uh, environments uh, how the difference how you are going to uh, see I mean what are all the differences you are going to see in AWS report okay it is not direct db direct path or db uh, logs or some other things right database files and other things here we have uh, exa data we have cell related information right so how we are going to read i'll make one more video related to this how i mean what is the main difference between uh, or the differences which we are going to observe that uh, in exa data environment aws report non exa data aws report how it is going to so in this way they just want to know whether you have generated any aws report have you ever worked on um, what i can say real time on the environment okay that's where these two questions has been asked and the difference between os watcher and exa watcher they just want to know the clarity of in between like what is the main difference between os watcher and exa watcher but it is out of scope of the interview it depends on the the interviewer and interview who's going to give that interview right the way they are going to answer the way they are going to ask the questions okay and what is the main purpose of use of top command something this is also on topic specified even though in a top command what we are going to see okay when you are uh, when you are going to use this top command and how it is going to useful to monitoring the in, as part of your performance tuning how the top command will be useful okay that is another question next exa data wise uh, there could be a like high level questions and how we are going to find exa data version okay and uh, what is the use of exa check and uh, architecture of that exa data explain the architecture of exa data mm -hmm. if you if, if somebody will ask you in the sva right uh, we need to ask like what kind of uh, like architecture they are they are looking like full or half or quarter rack which kind of uh, these things or you can give high level right compute cell storage in between compute and cell we have a network 
uh, configurations, right? Infinite bands, which is a Rockies, which is latest. So you have to prepare that architecture, whether you have an idea or not, uh, they're going to ask you that. And how you're going to apply the patches on the compute node and cell nodes, like which commands you're going, which process you're going to follow. Patch manager will be there or you can use o patch options, okay? Which processor you're going, which um, method you're going to use to apply, what is your experience on exadata, compute nodes and cell nodes patching. And finally, again, they're going to, in between only, right? They're going to ask you the patching in a rack environment. Non-rack, everybody can able to flexible. There is no much, uh, what I can say, ask on uh, regular patching, non-cluster patching. So they asked, what is the use of pre-patch.sh and post-patch.sh script mean? What is the use when you run, when you're going to apply the patch? So what exactly it will happen and what uh, exactly will happen when you run that post patch that has scripts and uh, they did, there is a scenario they have 16 node rack and uh, within three hours they want to apply the patches they, they they don't want much downtime as well so what is your approach to apply these patches okay how you're going to adapt how you're going to do this kind of one what is your approach so whether you have an hands-on experience or not if you have a patching knowledge just go through it and then explain uh, your experience, share your experience. Whether it is matching to their uh, expectations or not, that is a different story, but what exactly you have, you share that information, okay? That's all the questions. There are like few questions, but I don't want to like take all those things. Those are profile to profile. They're going to change the questions. Uh, and I just want to ask you guys, like these are all related to 10 plus years experience guy. Is a suitable or this is just a normal interview or they they have a requirement they want to take a guy just share your experience on this part guys okay that's all about this and i want to give answers for these two questions okay uh, for these two rack uh, why we need to run pre patch data and post patch data search as part of racking pa rack patching another one is uh, 16 node we have and i want to apply this and within a three hours what approach, what, which method you are going to choose. I try to give uh, an example. It, it, it may not exactly the same. Uh, we, we may have multiple options. We have multiple uh, processes, which is going to suitable to your environment. Okay, you are going to choose that. You can opt that option. So for this question, pre-patch is what exactly it is. Before going to apply that opatch, uh, auto, the command, we are going to use pre-patch.sh script. Uh, what exactly the thing is going to do? Validate the cluster health, backups of OCR and voting disks, prepare the environment to apply the patches on the grid home. Okay, it is going to prepare that environment, that node, and uh, validating the rolling, whether the rolling patch is enabled or not. Like that, those things also it is going to check. All this pre patch.sh is going to do it. This is high level, guys. I'll make another video separately to uh, go in depth of uh, pre patch.sh and post patch. What exactly the post patch will do? Verify the patch status, start the resources, clean up, validate CRS and ASM related things. So these things it is going to check as part of this. When, where you need to run, you need to run from the grid user or run from the root user. Okay for where you have installed your cluster softwares, right? And from there you need to do, this is a patch auto apply to apply the patches. That is a high level guys. And uh, next question is the 16 node one, right? You can go with one method, which is rolling patch and to avoid a uh, full cluster down. If they will ask, right? We don't want to down uh, half of the nodes. They have huge amount of load. <clears throat> they need to apply the patch without shutting down the single node. They will ask in that way, simple, simple thing. We need to understand the architecture. We need to understand the client requirement. We need to understand the environment first. Then only we can able to answer it. We cannot say, uh, we don't, we don't have any downtime. Can you do this patching within three hours? No one can able to answer in real time, right? They can expect that is interview. That's okay. <clears throat> but you have to share your experience or your approach, how you want to apply. So go with rolling mode node by node you can download whether it is going to complete in three hours or four hours or ten hours it is not uh, what i can say there is no downtime right it's not a matter how many hours you are going to take it another option is o patch auto uh, it is going to like node by node patching and reduce the manual steps that is another option where you can do this in that case right it is going to shut down the entire node 
particular node and it is going to apply all the database level and uh, grid on particular node. This is also rolling fashion, you need to do it. And uh, see here, the tight window, three hours for 16 nodes, consider rolling a, a large cluster in this uh, risky, parallel teams patching different nodes. Only if the if your process and approvals are allowed, you can do this. Patching database forms in rolling manner while keeping grid patching is controlled. Always validate uh, after each node. Do not proceed blindly to another node. So one node is done and then check all the services coming up or not and then you can proceed on that part. So here you can do uh, like whatever the approach, rolling patch by using opatch auto, node by node you can do it. Or if you have a downtime, go with three hours, use opatch auto, apply on the nodes and let's see how it is going through, okay? And you have one more thing is out of place patch also will be there. All 16 nodes, you need to have another 16 uh, grid home. There you can apply the patch. Within three hours, you can switch it back to that uh, new grid home where you have patched. Okay, that is also there, but resource is required, more resource is required for that. So that's uh, about the 16 node or 20 node, 100 nodes, whatever it is, how much uh, they have. We have to go with as per the plan, as per the uh, available options we have to adapt. Okay, now the quick reference for the uh, patching related things, right? Uh, how we are going to go with these commands, opatch version, what is your version? Opatch version, we can see it. Opatch LS unit, what are the patches you have applied? And the cluster status, and the cluster ready services things you can see database AS and, and the backup arm and backup we are going to take these are all high level things so chat checks other things okay that's all about um, this video guys uh, if you have any questions or if you have any uh, what i can say uh, comments comment in the comment uh, section on this particular uh, video all these questions and answers okay thank you and have a good day